Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to yet another edition of the local GM show. Today we are at Dixon Lives Production and on set we'll be joined by two young men and their father just to talk about the family journey in chess. Adongo Luanga is aged 12 years. He has been a national champion. Right now he's a candidate master and he'll be joined by his brother, Abuda Luanga, who is ranked 14-22, ranked 59th of the continent, and third in the under-14 age category in chess in Kenya. We are excited because as we listen to them, talk about the chess journey, someone out there is going to be encouraged to work as hard as they have worked and just to aspire to be in that space where they are right now because their experience is going to blow us apart. Let's be ready to welcome them on site. Karibuni sana. Welcome to the show, the two young chess masters, Cadet Master Odongo Luanga and Cadet Master Abuda Luanga. How have you been? I've been fine. How is the uh, COVID manenos taking you? Uh, it's it's been a struggle since things are different, but we're managing. We're managing well. Yeah. What about you, Dongo? COVID has been different, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, I've gotten more time to play chess since yeah. I'm not in school. Mm -hmm. I hope to get back to school. Um, I'm a bit disappointed because this year I wanted to win the under 12 national. Oh, wow. But it's true. Don't worry, we shall get into that. Tell me about the the outfit you're wearing, Nairobi Chess Academy and Club. Is this where you train? Can you talk to us about the academy? Um, the academy is a very good place for new, new chess players to learn how to play chess. It's also good for someone who knows how to play chess to get better. There are very many coaches. It's a very good learning opportunity for anybody who wants to go there. They host tournaments. And it's a, overall a, a good place to learn chess. Fantastic. Great. Aguda, who is Aguda? Tell us about yourself. People have heard about you because of your exploits in chess until you became a Kaiden Master. For those who don't know, Kaiden Master is one of the titles that you start growing up through in chess as you go up the ranks and then you become a FIDE Master and then you become International Master. Before you come to the highest accolade you can ever aspire to get to in chess, which is a Grand Master. has been your journey and who is a good in the first place? My journey has not been easy. It's been tough. Uh, because I learned to play chess first of all in my school consul at a primary mm -hmm. So when the it was doing a lot of activities, I came home and told my parents about it. Mm -hmm. And they were like, wow, this is uh, uh, my dad used to play part when we lived in India. So okay. they decided to get me into it. And that's when I started playing chess. Uh, what about you? Did you follow soon after your brother started. I know there's a two-year gap between you are 14, right? And he's 12. By the way, one time under 12 national champion, I think. Uh, no, I don't uh. win under 12 national championship. All right. Yeah. But right now you are ranked third in the under 14, I think. Yeah. All right, good. What about you? Um, I started playing chess when I was five. And I was introduced by my coach, George Chin. Mm -hmm. Um, He helped me go get through the basics and also some more advanced stuff mm -hmm. and nowadays I either train alone or with my dad. All right, tell me, what has chess done for you as a person? Has it helped you travel the world? Has it helped you improve in your academy? Because you know there's that intrinsic value that one gets from playing chess. Uh, chess has helped me see the world. I've been to Asia, Middle East, South Africa, other countries within East Africa mm -hmm. and also within Kenya I've been to places in our home before like for example Viga. Mm -hmm. I never imagined like there was a place like Viga <laughs> before. Well, Viga is my county so talk nicely about Viga. Eh? <laughs> I never imagined a place like uh -huh. Viga and I never knew about it before I'd been in a chess tournament so it's really helped me see a lot and explore the world. Same to you, Dongo. At a very young age, you guys have traveled the world more than probably some of us would desire to. How's been that experience for you? The experience has been wonderful. I've met many people. Mm -hmm. I've gotten friends. I have experience. 
in um, chess. I also mm. have experience in making friends. And also, chess has helped me a lot in my academics. It goes hand in hand with math. Uh-huh. It helped me a bit with my social studies, for example, when I learn about new countries. All right. There's a time, I think, Dongwe in Mombasa, was it 2018 or 20, around there, when you won the Under-21 Junior Chess Challenge organized by Light of Chess Club of Mombasa. How was that experience seeing that you are playing a higher age category than what you are, actually? Um, playing in a higher category than usually what I play is really good for me. Since when I get used to playing against stronger opponents, it's easier for me if I go back to juniors. Mm -hmm. And um, the whole experience was tough. I managed to come through with a win. Mm -hmm. Everybody there was strong. And I thank Lighthouse for making the tournament. Great. Aguda, what has been the high for you in chess, your chess career? I think the high for me was back in 2016. Mm-hmm. When I went for the Africa Individual Schools chess tournament with the uh, brother mm-hmm. and uh, finished third and got my candidate first. Wow, well, where was that? In Lusaka, Zambia, okay. the Golden Peacock Hotel. Mm-hmm. Uh, what made it memorable? Is it because of you got the title? Is it because the opposition was tough and you still managed to be third? There must be something that you took away from that event. Um, the opposition was tough and also I was. What made my problem was I was one of the few Kenyans who managed to get a title in that event. Where did you get your title? Don't... I also got my title from in Lusaka, Zambia. The same event? Yes. Uh-huh. I scored seven and a half points out of nine. Wow, that was impressive. I was third and it was a great experience. So as a family, you must have celebrated two titles coming to the family. Yes. Great. Uh, I remember in 2018 during the African Youth Chess Championship held in Kisumu, I don't know if you remember, you started off in, on shaky grounds and you are losing some obvious games that you should have converted to victory. I remember one day seeing your father very cross with you and I wondered how has that been for you, the parental influence in terms of playing chess? Uh, it was... Uh, it was a different experience from what I was used to because mm-hmm. I was used to having easy games and coming out with <laughs> jobs. So yeah. that gave me sort of a reality check uh-huh. and helped me as an it has helped me through my sense. All right, so it gave you time to look inwardly and discover that there's more to chess than what you thought you were playing initially. Yes. So did it help you pick up from there henceforth? Yeah, it helped me pick up and I think uh, if I had to play those people again, that's, they would... Uh, They'll be on the wrong side of you. Yeah. I remember you beat me, was it uh, 2019 in the National Blaze Chess Championship, November 2019 at Strathmore University. And then you, well, I must admit I was embarrassed. You told me the line I played is one you have studied a lot. Tell me, how was, how was I, how did it, how does it feel when the opponent just walks into your own preparation the way I did unwittingly so? Uh, it's kind of like a relief. Because uh, you know exactly what's going to happen. So it's easy for you to outwit your opponent and get the upper hand and beat you. So you want to say you're looking at me and wondering what's wrong with this MGM? Odongo, <laughs> <laughs> for you, what has been uh, inspiring for you so that you want to be a great chess player? Remember, you have kind of you to dominate the junior scene. Do you look forward to breaking through the national team? Yes, I look forward to being a great chess player like my inspiration, Ben Magana. Mm -hmm. He has won many trophies. He is always willing to help people learn more about chess. Mm -hmm. He plays and he plays solid. Great. So you want to mold your game around Ben Magana's image so that you become as strong as he's been. And I'm talking about breaking through the senior ranks, not the junior ranks, because there are sort of you guys have dominated. Yes. At what age do you aspire to break national? Because there's been this thing in Kenya that many of the junior players don't graduate to the senior ranks. So we are wondering, is it something that uh, someone like you is going to break through? Yes, I want to be the first grandmaster in Kenya. Wow. And I'd also like to 
be a very good chess player and maybe even get to play with top chess players in other countries. You have heard it, your brother wants to be one of uh, the black grandmasters that we have in the world. Does that give you motivation also to be sure that a younger brother not achieve that before you do? Or you are content with being on CM? Uh, no, I will, I'd like to really improve and become a grandmaster. Uh, but having, being older, I think a bit puts me a bit at a disadvantage to him mm-hmm. because my K factor will Maybe to that person reduced, not knowing K factor, can you tell that person what K factor is? Um, it's basically like a multiplier for the points you get for right. defeating rated players. Right. But, but my plan is to receive, to maximize the opportunity I have been given and uh, get a rating as high as possible with my K factor still at 14. Correct. Talking about opportunity, your parents have been a pill of great support and inspiration to many. What exactly do they tell you and how do they support you that makes you feel if you don't work hard enough, you'll be disappointed? Um, there was once I didn't qualify for nationals and I was really sad about it at home. Mm-hmm. And then my mom gave me a lot of emotional and motivational support. She helped me get through it. Um, I trained harder and then I managed to qualify the next time. Very good. I thank my parents for funding all of the trips I've gone to. They helped me a lot and they are just great people, honestly. Fantastic. If you're given a chance to choose other parents, you still choose them, right? Yes. What about for you? How has it been growing in this chess playing family? Let's say your father is a chess player, your brother is that competition. What has it helped you achieve? And the support that you have got from them, I believe, is the same support you get from that you get from your parents. It's been a great support, both uh, emotionally and both on the board. My, our dad usually makes sure we get at least two hours of training each day, and also have, you're talking about every day. Yeah, every day. yesterday, today, yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. And also having wow. a strong chess player as my dad really motivates me to become mm-hmm. better mm-hmm. than him and one day surpass him. Great. How do you juggle between chess training for two hours every day and your academic work? I have a timetable which sets out everything I do throughout mm-hmm. the day, which helps me keep organized so I can balance between academics and chess. Mm-hmm. Um, he- my health takes first priority. Good. I need to be in good health. Then academics take second priority, and thirdly, chess. Health. What do you do to keep to check your health? Do you go to the gym? Do you keep fit? Because chess, you need to be mentally fit. Do you work out, or do you just eat healthy? Um, sometimes I eat healthy and I exercise. I don't go to a gym, maybe I can go for a jog mm-hmm. or I can do some workouts at home, but I don't go to the gym. Uh, what about you? Do you follow the same regime your brother follows? Uh, not exactly. Mm-hmm. I normally, most of the time, I just go for jogs at Parkland Sports Club mm-hmm. with uh, my dad. We normally go at least five laps running and then the rest we walk around the field. Mm-hmm. Then I also watch what I eat. I don't like eating a lot of fatty food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your friends that you hang around with, are they also chess players? And what role do they play in helping you guys grow as chess players? That There's that healthy competition that you can come, that you can have with your friends that motivates you to be better than them. Do you have such friends? Or your friends are just you, the two of you? Um, uh, I have some few chess friends uh, that play chess. For example, Makrege Robert, he's mm-hmm. a very good chess player. Mm-hmm. He's gotten a lot of... Um, He's gotten a lot of chances to play against top players, and I'd like to be as good as him one day. All right. What about you? Uh, I have lots of friends. Some are not just players. Some are 
but uh, the ones that are chess players, for example, Timothy Mwapo, yes, they are very. He's a very strong player, and also he's a player who regularly accompanies me for international tournaments, mm-hmm. and it's nice having that friendly competition to push as well. As a person, how has chess helped you develop your character? One thing you have mentioned is about you have a timetable. That's part of discipline. What is that chess helped you mold in you as a person? Chess has helped me mold in me humble. Mm-hmm. Humility. Yes. Um, I'm humble on and off the board. If I'm playing against an opponent, no matter who they are, I am humble. But your moves are not as humble. That one, I, uh, your moves are crazy, man. But that's very good. Humility has been taught to you by chess. What about you? I think the most important thing I've gotten from chess is discipline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, in chess, if you don't discipline yourself, you won't be able to get far. For example, I have to discipline myself not to um, to follow what I've been taught and to regularly sharpen my skills. Okay. Is there a point when you read and feel this is just too much for me? I can't handle it anymore. I want to give up on this game because there's a lot of study involved. Theory keeps on changing and you have to keep abreast of such information. Have you ever reached a point and felt no? What am I doing? What am I doing this for? Yes, there's a time I I was very angry at myself. I got uh, I lost a game very cheaply mm-hmm. and I just felt like I wanted to quit. Mm-hmm. But then I realized just helped me get far. Yeah. And I could still do better. Oh, very good. The more backward you could look, the more forward you could see. Because of what the journey you have walked, you didn't want to let it go to waste. Yes. That's very motivating. What about you, Abuda? Um, there were points in my career, like for chess, when I used to play these strong senior players, I am at an advantage, but I was never able to, to, convert. to convert the advantage. Mm-hmm. So I it's like I hit a wall, so I just wanted to give up. But uh, through the motivations from my brother, my friends, and uh, my parents, I kept on going, and I eventually broke through the wall. Fantastic. You two seem to be always together. You love each other, or it's just because your brother and you have to be together? You seem to be very good friends. I admire that. Of course. Of course. Sometimes I wish I was your brother. <laughs> Looking into that camera, Aguda, camera number three, can you tell that young boy or young girl listening to you and watching you what they need to do to be able to balance their chess and their academic and their life and excel at the same time the way you have? That's your camera. I think uh, the most important thing to excel in chess is to be able to train by yourself because there's only so much a coach can do. And uh, there's a difference between the way your coach will understand a position and the way you understand a position. So if you're able to understand a position as well or even better than your coach, you'll be you'll be able to go far. And as far as it comes to academics, I think it's important to also make sure that you don't spend too much on time on chess and uh, also and spend maybe more or as much time on academics and uh, also to try and do studies on them and improve. Fantastic. Aguda, camera two is yours. Aodongo, oh, sorry, camera two is yours. What do you want to tell that person watching you? Um, never give up. No matter how hard it gets, never give up. It will always get better. No matter how bad you play a game, you can't always win. You'll eventually lose at a point, even the top players like Magnus Carlsen, he's lost a game before. Just Correct. never give up. Correct. Never give up. Winners never quit and quitters never win. As we finish, now that you've mentioned Magnus Carlsen, who is the player you admire most on the international scene and locally? Locally, I admire the most Ben Magana. Mm-hmm. He's a very solid player, like me, humble, on and off the board. Mm-hmm. He's always willing to teach someone something. Right. Mm-hmm. When you're doing analysis, no matter what move you suggest, he always has respect for you. Correct. These are very kind of Internationally? Internationally, I, I admire Magnus Carlsen. Mm-hmm. He's a very good player. He's 
able to beat most players. He is very humble and he's overall a good, a good person. Great. Magnus Carlsen is the world champion from Norway. Aguda, as we finish up, who are these players you admire internationally and locally? Uh, internationally, I admire Hikaru Nakamura. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, uh, most of the time I watch his live streams on chess.com. Uh-huh. Uh, he's quite funny and has interesting ideas on how certain positions are played and I want to sound the richer strength. That's all. Wow, great. Mm-hmm. Locally? Locally, I uh, admire my coach, Jojo Cheng, because mm-hmm. he, uh, he's quite strong and also he's willing to help you in any scenario and to help you with anything you need to learn, no matter how, how what's it called, no matter how it may not benefit yes. in any way, it's just yes. willing to help uh, you. Thank you very much. You have heard it from the two young candidate masters. We'll be right back with the father to hear about what it takes as a parent to support young playing chess kids. Keep it right here on the local GM show. Thank you. Welcome back to the local GM show. I'm joined now by the father of Buddha and Adongo Luanga, Mr. Karoli Luanga. Welcome to the show, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, local GM. I'm a big fan of your show. I'm happy wow. to be here today. Very kind of to me. Thank you very much. Tell us, who is Karoli Luanga? Uh, well, uh, I'm an advocate of the High Court mm-hmm. and also a chess player. Mm-hmm. And uh, the parents of the two uh, chess masters, Nakuda mm-hmm. and Odongo. Mm-hmm. What does it make you as a parent to see your kids excel to such national and even continental glory and even very soon when you to conquer the world stage well uh, as a parent naturally it is a source of pride mm-hmm. and uh, it is a testimony of uh, the hard work and effort that uh, we've jointly put towards uh, uh, making them uh, good chess players as a parent i mean i've seen this kid trot the globe traveling in, in chess i mean i've been asking myself where do you get the passion to support them financially because I know it's not cheap. And how do you get the resources to do this? Well, uh, it's been uh, a sacrifice on my part. Other than uh, a sacrifice, there's one thing I'd also like to tell you that it's all about planning. Mm -hmm. For instance, if we were to travel in December, I would book my ticket now. All right. If I were to book my ticket now, for instance, a ticket to... For instance, New Delhi, if mm-hmm. I were to book it now with the intention of traveling in December, mm-hmm. I would get it at a discounted rate of 20000 per person. Wow. So that makes it affordable. Mm-hmm. Other than that, it's also hard on us. When we are traveling, we travel on a budget. Mm-hmm. So we look for cheap hotels, we look for budget, uh, uh, good wow. deals. Mm-hmm. That's how we might make it. But basically, it's a sacrifice. And I'm assuming to be able to do this, the mother too must buy into the idea because I know as a family, the mother might think he pesa in a wapi Yes, uh, <laughs> the mother has been very supportive. Right. The mother has been always, always supporting their chess uh, career. Mm-hmm. If I am not there, she steps in. And uh, as they say, it's all a teamwork that has brought us this far. Mm-hmm. And of course, uh, we are happy about it so far. <laughs> As a parent who has played chess, and you see sometimes your kid, maybe the learning curve can be steep, do you sometimes get angry at them, feeling that they are not getting the ideas well? Or have you learned how to be patient and guide them through the process? In other words, I'm asking, how do you support your kids in their chess playing? Well, uh, anytime they play, I have to look at their games. Mm -hmm. And uh, whatever the results, It doesn't matter so much. Mm -hmm. What matters to me so much is how they played. Mm -hmm. If you win and you didn't play well, Mm -hmm. I'm not happy. If you lose and you didn't play well, I'm not happy at all. Mm -hmm. So it is more about how did you play the game. Mm -hmm. That is what matters uh, to me most. 
And I'm assuming because of that, sometimes you must have felt frustrated in courts by the lack of maybe delivery on their part. How do you overcome that? And how do you just uh, say, I did keep on doing what I'm doing for these kids? Uh, to be honest with you, I have been uh, happy with their progress so far mm -hmm. because myself, I'm a chess player. Yeah. I know where they are yes. and uh, where we want to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am happy that there's been so much progress now. As of now, I can tell you that they are, both of them are better players than me. Oh, great. So do you want to say because you're a chess player, now you have that understanding of them? There are those parents who are not chess players. Yet their kids are playing. Now, sometimes they might experience, have this frustration in them, maybe feel the coach is not doing the right thing. What do you want to tell that parent? Look into that camera and talk to that parent who feels sometimes the kids are not improving as fast as they want them to do. Well, uh, this thing takes time. It is a journey and uh, you have to be patient. Give your, uh, your child time to develop. And I think that if you do it consistently, then uh, the results will... Uh, will show. You might not, you might come to a tournament the first time and you'll think that uh, 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 your kid is going to win and if he doesn't win, you get frustrated. Mm -hmm. That is not the way to go it. Just be patient. That kid that you'll see has won that event, has played chess on and on and on and on. And chess is a game of experience. The more they play, the more they yeah. become good. Great. How do you balance your time between being an advocate, which is very involving, you have to be in court, you have to be in the office, and then family life also, and chess? Because I find many people have been wrestling within themselves how to allocate the time for each of those activities. Well, uh, it's all about planning. Once we receive, once we know that there's an event coming up, mm -hmm. our life rotates around that event. So that if you had another event, probably that would clash with that one, you either bring it forward or mm -hmm. you move it backward. Mm -hmm. That's the way we, we manage. So that uh, other than uh, in, if it's an uh, educational event, which they must attend, mm -hmm. then if it is other social events, then uh, uh, chess takes pre uh, preference. All right. You have been known as a, in quotes, critic of the way affairs of chess sometimes are run in the country, let's say with the national federation. And also you have been a great supporter to the efforts being put in place by the national federation to get chess to the next level. Where do you think we fall short? Well, uh, I am not such a critic as such, but I tell it as it is. Mm -hmm. I am not shy to tell the federation. And uh, to make it clear, I have always pointed out shortcomings in all federations mm -hmm. and I've always uh, applauded what, whenever they do something good. What I feel is uh, the problem is that not much emphasis is being put on uh, uh, junior chess. Mm -hmm. And uh, like they say, you bend the iron while it's still hot. Yeah. If you lay emphasis on uh, the juniors, mm -hmm. then uh, the results will definitely show in a couple of, of years. Mm -hmm. So are you saying because of failing to lay good structures, let me put it that way, to support the junior scene, we have not had them breaking through or otherwise our top player have not performed up optimum because maybe they never they had the opportunities early enough? Yes, yes. Why, I'm, why I say so is that if my son at 14 years is better than me, mm -hmm. time is on their side. At some, to at some point in life, other things will catch up mm -hmm. and probably take uh, uh, compete with chess. Mm -hmm. But if he concentrates while he's still young, then uh, definitely the future is better than if we concentrate on a person who is trying to earn a living, yes, is struggling yes. with uh, family issues, mm -hmm. and uh, has a very complicated life. Mm -hmm. That's why I believe if we put emphasis on... Uh, on the youth, we will get uh, better results. All right. Now, as a parent, as a person who is responsible for this young kid's life, how do you see chess playing a role in the academics? Because there's been this point thought that chess helps kids improve in the academics. Have you seen that? 
Yes, I am a testimony to that. Mm -hmm. uh, if I give you, if I tell you my story, when uh, my elder son was started school, mm -hmm. we realized that uh, he was suffering from uh, dyslexia. Mm -hmm. That means that uh, he could not easily differentiate between a six and a nine, mm -hmm. a D and a B, and we were running all over trying to get professional help on how we can uh, get him to overcome this. So we were being told to try this, try this, try this, and mm -hmm. we were trying and desperation is setting in, yeah. but at some point he comes home and uh, I see that he's talking about chess. Mm -hmm. So I uh, decide that let me see how he'll take up this game and we decided to teach him that game. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that within a period of six months, he was able to overcome wow. that uh, mm -hmm. uh, condition? Yes. Because, simply because when you play chess, you concentrate totally. Yeah. And that is what the professionals had been mm -hmm. uh, uh, Trying suggesting. to figure out. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that if they can concentrate, then the concentration level will also improve mm -hmm. such that they're able to, even but when they look at the the, 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 the the figures and the letters yes. that were giving them problem, mm. then uh, they can easily note when they ma make a mistake. Great. And because of that, they were able to overcome that. And after that, they became better and better students. They are doing extremely well in school, especially yeah. in maths and mm. uh, sciences. All right. Yes. As we conclude, what final thoughts do you have to say maybe to anybody watching you? It could be the National Federation. It could be to other parents. It could be to other chess players. What needs to be done to get better at it without wasting time? Give the children, give the youth players ample opportunity. Concentrate on them. It is the foundation of uh, uh, chess. And if we do it uh, on and on and give them good exposure, I'm telling you, we will uh, be able to bridge the gap between us as a country and the top chess playing countries in the world. Wow, thank you very much for joining us today on the show. We look forward to watching you again in the future date. You have heard it from him. You have heard how chess has left the kids. And we want to encourage parents out there to motivate their kids in playing chess because chess has got a lot of benefit. Keep it right here. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to the local GM show. In this segment, we are joined by an aspiring ladies player called Yvonne, and she's going to get instruction from none other than guided master Abu Dalwanga. She needs to improve on her game, especially the opening stage. Remember, chess has got three stages, the opening, the middle game, and the end game, and there are principles that guide each stage of the game. Odongo here, is going to teach her on a particular opening that's called the Rui Lopez, or otherwise named after Spanish piece, the Spanish opening. Abuda, take it off. Uh, the real Lopez basically starts with the moves e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and then bishop c5. Now this is the basic real Lopez position. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several moves that could happen here, but the most common move for black is a6. So now he awaits response determines uh, the rest of the game. Either white can either pick the knight to the bishop, which is known as the exchange version of Real Lopez, or take the bishop back to a4, also known as the closed version of the Real Lopez. So today we're going to look at the closed version. Mm -hmm. The next response would be knight to f6. Now, here I would I prefer the move d3. But most people would like castle. But in this scenario, I do not think castle is the best move. For after knight times, and then rook, then knight comes back. In this position, white really gains nothing from it. So, mm -hmm. and otherwise, I think black really covers the game. So, if you go back to this position, mm -hmm. 
after night F3 and before the move B6. Uh, guarding your pawn on E5. Yeah, guarding the pawn on E5 and opening up the bishop. Most of the time, black will reply with E, bishop to C5. Mm -hmm. So here, most players would think to pick the knight, then pick, and then knight picks this pawn. So the idea behind capturing the knight on c6 actually to remove the defender from that pawn on e5, right? Yeah, but before picking. One, are you getting the new ideas that you didn't have? Uh, you didn't know. Well, yeah, but it's a really uh, challenging one for a beginner. Mm -hmm. So I'd really ask him to take me a bit slow. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh -huh. Okay, but in order to pick this pawn, first of all, you have to prepare for in this scenario. Is a very strong move, which is queen to e4, which is threatening knight and attacking the knight at the same time. So, in this scenario, normally black would lose uh, the piece. So, it wouldn't be tricky enough piece. to pick that pawn there. Yeah, you should add it. It's a tactic involved. That's a fork now, then, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, instead, in this scenario, This scenario, the best move is to castle, mm -hmm. which now will let you pick the knight, which will now let you pick the knight. But it's black to play first, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The idea behind is to let you okay, pick okay. the knight the and then end up picking the pawn. Correct. Because now the king is safe. Yeah, because now the king is safe. Right. So the most accurate move here for, for black is to protect the so now you have the several things you can do. You can either start developing a knight either to c, c3 or knight b to b, knight b to b2, or you play the move c3. Why, why c3? What is the idea? Don't worry how he's able to tell the board position without the indices, the numbers on the side, it comes with practice. You'll get that. He's able to know the, the various squares by name. C3. Uh, the idea behind C3 is to prevent the loss of the education. Okay. Uh, for in this this open area of this, the education is a very important piece. It helps you ah. attack the king. Okay. For so let's say if you play the knight here, knight uh -huh. b to b7. After the move b5, uh -huh. and then bishop. Ah, the yes, knight, knight. Ah, comes so, to you. Okay, knight comes to f5, attacking the bishop. Okay, good, good, good. So, the same. So, what you are saying as a player, you need to know what role each piece is playing and which pieces you need to keep on the board and the ones to trade. All right. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I play the move c3. So that the knight can retreat back to the bishop, can retreat back to the bishop, can retreat back to yeah, correct. All right. Then there's the move. Zero zero to black, and then he had like a leg playing the move knight b to b7. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe you can tell me what it means. Um, uh, the move zero zero that is ah, mentioned, yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. This move is also known as castle. It's uh, okay, and it's a move that allows the king to play to move two squares on the rook once at the same it's considered one move but two pieces are moving at once but it's considered one move okay. castling helps for the king to be safe okay. for the time being okay. and also introduces the rook toward the center of the, of the game okay. and also to initiate the move castling you have to start with the king or if you start oh so you're saying you can't tack the rook first yeah, yes you can't touch the rook. castling is a king's move yeah, so you tack the king first so if, if you touch the rook, it will be considered a rook move and you will be able to cast it. Ah, okay. So after the castling, like this knight is here. After castling, I will play the move rook to e1. So now here, most players will play b5. So there are two options. You either play your bishop back to b3 mm -hmm. or back to c2. I prefer playing back to C2. I think uh, it's the best move. I don't like wasting any time 
bishop here in the night. Because the night, okay, okay. You see, Jesus time is of essence in a game of chess. You don't lose time. The other one's known as tempo. T E M P O. Yes. Tempo. Mm -hmm. Then black played to move a rook to E1. After mm -hmm. this, there's a move knight to F1. So here, there's this move bishop to B. No, bishop to g4. Mm -hmm. So here there are two moves you can play. You can either play the knight to g3 mm -hmm. and then later aim to push the h pawn. So that if it goes here, you can. So if black was to play here, you can p capture, the knight captures, then you capture the pawn on g. But the rook will capture? Yeah, the rook can capture, but this is pawn. The fork. Yeah. All right. So there are tactics in this uh, particular kind of line. Okay. Yeah. You give the impression that the knight is free, but then there's a fork coming. Okay. But great. the knight is still hanging because it's the rook goes back. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Initially, I couldn't see that the fork was coming. I didn't see that. All right. Good. Great. Okay. At this stage of the game, are we still in the opening or we are getting the middle game? Um. Technically, all these moves are book moves, so I, I tend to consider them. The opening. Wow. Book moves are moves that is theory. What has been written in the books of chess, what you need to play at a particular time. That's theory. Book moves. So in this position, I prefer playing the move h3. Kicking away the bishop. Yes. So G4, after right? bishop to g, after bishop to h5, there's a move knight to g, g3. Hitting the bishop again. Yeah, attacking the bishop. So the bishop moves back, and now there's this move knight. Why is so much after that bishop? Uh, I'm not after the bishop. Ah. My plan is to get my knight to this. F5. Yeah. This Any special knight, reason why the knight should be sitting on F5? This uh, knight is very strong. Removing okay. it okay. is very hard, and there are lots of tactics and plays that come from the knight B. Oh, nice. So after this move, most players tend to push mm -hmm. the H, H6 pawn. So here I'll play knight to f. Then the players here would play queen to d7. Connecting the rooks? Yeah, connecting the rooks. Okay. And here I'll play queen to f3. Now, after rook a to d1, there's a tactic here where you pick the h pawn. Oh, yes, because if the g pawn captures the h6, the knight is hanging. On F6 is hanging. All right, all right, all right. This is like a minefield. Tactics are bound. You have to be alert. That's why we say chess, you need to focus and concentrate. So Your mind must be there. All right. So after this, I think uh, white is better off and should be able to convert. And if you go back to this position, this position. You go back to this position. H3. The players who would play the bishop back to mm -hmm. e6. Mm -hmm. This is a blunder because of the move d4. d4. Uh, attacking that pawn, the pawn captures, the yes, other pawn, the c pawn still captures. The c pawn. Ah, and then the fork is inevitable. Yeah, wow. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Consider the fork is coming on d5. Oh, great. Yeah, we are learning. Uh, we are learning tactics. This will come to you. I know right now it sounds like rocket science because you're still at the formative thing. But this was some of the things you have to go through to be a master. I think that will wrap up for, for us today. Thank you very much, Abuda, for helping us understand the Spanish opening. And anybody who wants to aspire to be a great chess player, we are told from the beginning of the show, the Robbie Chess Academy, where they attend and club, is right there for you to, to get in touch and get to be taught a bit of chess. The other academies too are across Kenya, so hit the internet and find out where you can fit yourself. Thank you for joining us on the local GM show. 
Uh, the coming up next will be interviews with the uh, administrators of Chase, that's the National Federation. We have got organizers, we have got arbiters, those are the officials who run the chess tournament, and many other stakeholders. We'll be talking to players who have excelled at uh, the national level and also in their career through chess. So we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Terry and Chess Academy, and get notified when the next show is published. Thank you very much. See you next time.